Phoenix EQ12 was a banger of a mini PC, and now we have the follow-up, the EQ13. Available with a couple of CPU options and brings along some new features. Although it's still using Intel's older Lake N series processors, as the next generation of budget CPUs likely won't show up until 2025. So what's new on the EQ13 front? We'll get into it right after this message. Are you looking for a way to safely and quickly transfer files and apps to a new PC? Well, say hello to Ease Us To Do PC Trans, a simple to use app that can help you transfer programs from one PC to another or create a full backup of your computer. Try it for free with the link in the video description. B-Lynx EQ13 is still blue and it's still plastic. The design has some similarities to the EQ12, but has been updated to better match b newer minis. Also, the plastic quality looks better and is more solid than before, but it's still a fingerprint magnet. Oh, and the bright red power button is now gone for something much more subtle. b EQ13 is again available with Intel's N100, or you can go all out and get the upgraded Intel N200, which isn't a very common option and the one we're checking out in this video, which is great because I've been waiting patiently to benchmark the CPU properly. All the previous N200 minis reviewed were running at a lower power limit or had cooling problems. Intel's N200 is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with UHD graphics and it's similar to the N100. If the N100 is a Celeron, then the N200 should be the Pentium chip. And while it does perform better than the N100, I don't think it's the true successor to the previous generation Pentium N6005, and we'll take a look in the benchmarks shortly. b EQ13 is currently available for $250 US for the N200 model with 16GB of DDR4 and a 500GB SSD on Amazon after the coupon. You can save yourself another $40 for the same configuration with the N100. Something we've seen in the mini PC space for a while now is wild marketing claims. And I'm not just talking about the companies, but YouTubers as well. As an example, silent operation. And then you put a bit of load on the CPU and it starts sounding like a vacuum cleaner. Well, B-Link claims the EQ13 has near silent operation and I'm happy to say that it's not BS and lives up to the claim. But we'll go over it in detail later. Another feature of the EQ13 is an inbuilt power supply. It's an impressive marketing point and looks a bit nicer, I guess. But if you dig a bit deeper, it raises some questions. If by chance the inbuilt power supply dies, will you be able to buy a replacement? I doubt it. So what happens if the power supply dies? Well, I guess you can always use your mini as a doorstop. How much space has been saved by going inbuilt? I'd say not much considering a low power AC adapter, which is all that's needed for this mini, is about this large and plugs into a wall socket. You're just getting a smaller plug. Is this really what people want? Anyway, it's something to keep in mind, like soldered memory on really tiny mini PCs. However, in that case, there's just no space for soda memory slots. So it's easier to accept that it can't be upgraded or replaced. Ports on this one are interesting. The front has USB type A and C, both 10 gigabit. Unfortunately, no USB power delivery or display with the USB C. It's just the data port. Anyone else find that audio jack position in the middle odd? On the rear, we have vertical ports, which aren't commonly used. Another two USB 3, 10 gigabit, a USB 2, dual HDMI ports supporting a max of 4K 60 Hz, dual Realtek gigabit LAN, which is a downgrade from the EQ12's dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, and for wireless, B-Link has thrown in Intel's Wi-Fi 6 AX101 chip. The Bluetooth range on the EQ13 is good. I haven't done a lot of tests on the budget minis, but comparing it to the higher end, it's doing well. And for the new Wi-Fi test I've come up with, I'm playing an eSports game at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G wireless band and the game client isn't reporting any network issues during the full gaming session. So, that's a pass. b EQ13 is light on accessories. Along with a PC, you'll find a power cord and HDMI in the box. That's it. Opening it up is just as annoying as the b 8. The screws are covered with bits of rubber to make it look nicer 
and makes it a complete pain in the ass to remove. I'm using a flat headed screwdriver to try and pop these bastards out. One eternity later. Well, that sucked. At least now it's easy going. Four screws, pull on the rubber, and up she pops. So here is the internal power supply I was talking about. Looks proprietary to me. There's one stick of DDR4 3200. Just a reminder that older Lake N CPUs only support single channel memory. A pretty awesome feature here is that the EQ13 supports dual NVMe drives and the occupied slot also supports MSATA, which is actually what B-Link has included. I'll test the bandwidth of both slots and report it in the benchmarks. Windows 11 Pro is included with the EQ13 and no malware was found after scanning the OS. Ubuntu worked without any problems off the USB if you prefer to use Linux. And with that all out of the way, you know what time it is, no? Oh, well, it's benchmark time. B-Link's EQ13 matches the top spot for the quad-core N-series CPUs. A good start. However, I went to the BIOS and upped the power limit from 25 watts to 30 to see if it made any difference. And it sure did. A new winner here with a score of 1001 and clearly beats the previous gen Pentium. With the default settings, the EQ13 isn't anything impressive in the multi-core test but upping the power limit shoots it past all the other quad cores with a score almost 10% above the next best. Either way, it beats the previous gen Pentium CPU. Geekbench shows similar results. The N200 EQ13 does well at default and jumps into first place with a power limit increased. Same thing happens in multi-core. In the H.264 software video encoding benchmarks, we see the same pattern. It's a bit above average at default, and with a higher power limit, it takes first spot against all the quad-core CPUs. So the takeaway here is it's the best performing quad-core CPU only once you increase the power limit. Otherwise, it's just good. This is one of the very few budget minis to have dual 2280 M.2 NVMe slots. The one located next to the power supply is a full speed Gen 3 X4 while the one next to it is just Gen 3 X1. So a quarter of the speed, around 900 megabytes per second maximum sequential read and write. The MSATA drive B-Link has thrown in is only labeled as AZW, which is the manufacturer of this mini. Windows doesn't provide any more details and neither did Crystal Disk Info. Anyway, it's close to maxing out the SATA spec on the sequential read and writes. Here's why I don't think the N200 is a Pentium N6005 successor. While the graphics score beats all the N100 minis, it's still behind the previous gen N6005. Maybe it could match or beat it with DDR5, but the EQ13 uses DDR4. Either way, my pick for the Pentium successor is the strangely named Intel N97, which beats the N6005 in both CPU and GPU metrics. The 3 Mark DX12 result for the N200 is similar and the EQ13 has almost a 13% increase of the best N100 result. Oh, and the higher power limit doesn't affect the integrated graphics score. Finally, we have 3 Mark Steel Nomad, which shows the difference between the N200 and N97. But does that extra N97 graphics performance matter? Depends what you're using it for. Everyday computing, you're not going to notice. Video editing will be a similar experience. Simple 1080p projects will be fine. AV1 video at 4K60 decodes on both, no problem. One area you will see a difference is in games. You'll get a better frame rate with the N97. But when it comes to emulation, all the latest Intel quad core N series CPUs are stuck playing PS2. GameCube and Wii at 720p resolution. So the needle doesn't move there with the N97 either. Okay, now let's check out the BIOS. You've got the option of what happens to the mini after a power failure, which can be found in the chipset tab. In advance, there's S5 RTC wake settings, and that's all I could find of interest. To increase the power limit, in the advanced tab, choose power and performance, CPU power management control, View configure turbo options, and I set PL1 and PL2 to 30 watts to force maximum power draw. Then of course you'll need to save and exit. 
And that segues nicely into idle power draw, which is higher than average at 11 watts on this mini, and the maximum depends if you increase the power limit, which I think is safe as it only adds another 2 watts. Overall power draw is on the high side compared to other budget minis I've tested. Maximum CPU temp again depends on the power limit, but it is around the middle of the chart either way. What's most impressive about the EQ13 is how quiet it is. My sound meter couldn't pick it up at idle or load. Even though the Geekon Mini Air 12 also didn't register, the B-Link EQ13 is even quieter under load compared side by side and is the quietest actively cooled mini PC I've ever tested, period. The SATA SSD drive temp only went up from 30 to 32C with my thrash test, so that chunky heatsink is doing its job if the temperature sensor isn't BS. And with all that out of the way, it's time for the conclusion. B-Link's EQ13 is the best performing N200 Mini I've looked at, and one of the best performing Alder Lake N Minis in general, if you increase the power limit. I'm impressed by the new design, especially what they've done internally. The inbuilt power supply is a unique feature, and some will love it, but I'm not convinced it's a good idea. Remember the magnetic power plug B-Link tried out last year? Yeah, I wasn't a fan, and it was killed off pretty quickly. The EQ13 is the quietest fan-cooled mini PC I've ever tested. Dual NVMe drives is a rarity with Alder Lake mini PCs. And while dual LAN is back, it's only gigabit, while the EQ12 had dual 2.5 gigabit. So the EQ13 takes a hit in wide networking if that's important to you. The USB-C port doesn't have any features. It's just a straight up data port. The inbuilt power supply is going to put off some enthusiasts who want to easily repair and replace parts where they can. For the price, I would have liked to see DDR5 instead of DDR4. Speaking of price, while I'm unlikely to review the N100 model, the EQ12 benchmarks give a rough guide on the difference between the two. The N200 looks to be around 10% better in CPU and GPU performance than the N100 for an extra 40 US dollars. So, that should help you make your decision if you're interested in this mini, and you can find my affiliate links down in the video description, which keeps this channel independent and alive and kicking. Curious to hear your thoughts on the B-Link EQ13, and especially what you think about the inbuilt power supply. B-Link has been doing some interesting things lately, especially with cooling and noise reduction. And if you're looking for a high-end AMD mini PC that's low on noise, you should definitely check out my review of the B-Link Sur 8 right here. It's a real game changer. Cheers!